This succulent is such a cutie. It goes by two names. Some call it Echoviria Tiny Burger, but I think the correct name is Tiny Burger. I'm really sorry if I'm butchering the pronunciation here. If anyone knows the correct way, you can let me know in the comments. It is said to be a spontaneous hybrid that has developed in the nursery of the late Tiny Burger. There's also speculation that Tiny Burger may have been a result of crossing Echeveria elegance with either Lilacina or Lola. But one thing is for sure, this is one stunning and surprisingly easy succulent to grow. Tiny Burger grows beautiful compact rosettes to about 12 cm or 5 inches in diameter. It has a clumping habit and when the offsets are kept intact, it will keep spreading as long as there's enough space and nutrients. Mature clumps can measure over 20 cm or 8 inches. Height-wise, Tiny Burger grows low to the ground on a short stem and can get to about 8 cm or 3 inches tall. The leaves are chunky with a pointy tip. The size and shape can very much depend on the growing environment. They are covered in a dusty substance called the farina which acts like a sunscreen and protects the leaves from sunburn. Tiny Burger has amazing stress colors. It can turn metallic purple, lilac and pink. The best colors usually come through during the cooler months and when the plant is stressed. During the growing season and when the weather is warm, Tiny Burger is likely to be a greyish colour. This succulent is a sun lover and will grow best in a bright sunny spot outdoors. It does tolerate outdoor shade and filtered light but is likely to not get colourful. It can grow leggy and stretched as a result. Fungal diseases are also more likely to attack when succulents are grown in shaded and humid spots. Unfortunately, Tiny Burger is not suitable to be grown indoors long term and will likely eventually die unless you have a plant growing lights, a sunroom or a huge sunny window. It should however tolerate overwintering and short stays indoors as long as it's kept in a super bright spot. Tiny Burger will grow well in pots as well as frost free gardens. If grown in pots, repotting every year or so will ensure lots of offsets and a healthy plant. While it will tolerate being rootbound quite well, it's probably going to lose a few of the bottom leaves as a result. The offsets may also not grow and tiny will stay tiny if not given enough root space. If you only get light frosts and no snow during winter, you can grow this cute baby in the garden. To help it establish and grow better, mix any type of potting mix in with the garden soil. Roots of most smaller growing succulents are quite thin and can find it hard to break through hard garden soil. By cultivating and mixing in a bit of potting mix, you'll add nutrients and improve the soil structure. When planting in the garden, it's best to choose a slope raised bed or a spot where water doesn't pool after the rain. In pots, the absolute best potting medium for tiny is succulent potting mix. It will have the right pH and nutrients tailored to succulent plants. As mentioned earlier, when planting in the garden, make sure to cultivate the soil. Tiny is surprisingly tolerant of overwatering and can stay outdoors even when it's raining quite heavily. In my experience, it's not very susceptible to fungal disease such as mildew, rot or black spots. I've raised about 200 of these plants to date and have not had a problem with conditions like edema either. As long as tiny is planted in succulent potting mix, the pot has holes and it's exposed to plenty of good sun, it should be fine. In my nursery, all tiny burgers live permanently outdoors. If you're growing this plant in a greenhouse or undercover, water well once the potting mix dries up completely from previous watering. In summer, this could mean watering a few times per week and almost not at all during the cold months. Tiny will deal with drought as well and can last for months without any water whatsoever. It can lose quite a few leaves if kept too dry for too long though. Temperature-wise, Tiny will tolerate heat well over 40 degrees Celsius or 104 Fahrenheit, though it should be moved out of the sun once it gets this hot. If exposed to direct sun during extreme heat waves, the leaves can suffer sunburn and the plant could die, especially when planted in dark colored pots. 
tiny burger is a bit frost tolerant but is not likely to survive when frost settles for too long or when it snows. Frost cloth can be used to protect your succulents from the occasional frost but if your climate gets snow I'd advise to bring this plant indoors for the duration. Echeveria tiny burger can be propagated from seed, leaf and cuttings of offsets. In my opinion the seed is not worth trying as it's super long process and it can be hard to find a reliable seed seller. For fast results propagating cuttings of offsets is the best method. Wait until there's a bit of a stalk and cut with clean scissors. The cuttings should then be left to dry in a shaded dry spot for a minimum of 24 hours. They can then be planted into pots filled with succulent potting mix and transplanted into the garden or a bigger pot once enough roots develop. First roots should start growing in 2 to 4 weeks and the plant will be ready to transplant in approximately 2 to 3 months. If you want loads of plants, leaf propagation is the way to go. Tiny propagates from leaf well, however, they may prove difficult to remove without breaking. I find it a lot easier when I remove the plants out of the pot in order to get to the most bottom leaves. I leave the leaves in a tray in a bright but shaded greenhouse and wait for leaf babies to emerge. I then plant them in trays or pots filled with succulent potting mix and wait a few months until the roots have grown well into the pot. In my experience, propagating is best done in spring. Summit is usually also good but do be careful to protect your cuttings and leaves from strong sun as they can burn easily. In climates where autumn and winter are mild, you can also propagate cuttings at the beginning of autumn. Personally, I stop propagating leaves by early to mid-summer so the plant has a chance to develop before winter. Technically, tiny burger can be susceptible to all the succulent pests but in my experience they are not particularly drawn to it. I've only really clocked aphids when the flowers appear but have not had any other pests bothering it. I do still keep an eye on mealybugs, both foliar and root. You just never know with these buggers. Root mealybugs usually settle on root-bound plants. This is why checking on the health of the roots can be important. Bigger pests such as snails, slugs, caterpillars and grasshoppers can pose a threat too. If larger chunks go missing, one of them is likely to be the culprit. The blooms grow high above the rosette and form an arch. Each arch has about 10 individual pink and yellow flowers. Here in Australia, tiny burger flowers at the end of winter and through early spring, but this can be different in other parts of the world. All echeveria are said to be non-toxic to dogs, cats, other pets, livestock and humans. Having said that, I would not advise making a tiny burger salad just in case. And that is all for today. I hope this video was useful and if you have anything to add or would like to leave a comment, you can do so below. To learn more about succulents, hit that subscribe button or go to our website succulentgrowingtips.com. Thank you very much for watching.